Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Road to Pro. Today I'm going to go over two quick things with you. Illinois State and how to use a singles zone defense. Today we're going to go over mine. I don't think it's necessarily the world's greatest zone, but it's a zone that I know well and can teach you rather quickly. When it comes to Illinois State, this was a very fun turn for me. First one back in a long time, got to see a lot of old friends. I didn't compete or play near as well as I'd hoped I would. There's a couple reasons for that, but we'll go over that in just a minute. When it comes to a single zone, it has to be something that you're comfortable with. Something that works well for you and that you can use and, and continuously use throughout an event and make minor adjustments based on the offense that the opponent can create from their two rod. A single zone can really make or break you in a singles match. There's a lot of things that go on in singles that can be very difficult to overcome, but if you're getting scored on every time your opponent has the ball on their two rod, you're going to have a bad day. First and foremost, when it comes to Illinois State, the tournament itself actually ran rather well. There were too many people for the event, um, which did make it run very far behind. They changed singles, open singles, which is the main event, into a single elimination bracket, which is not something I was really ready for, and they changed the day of the event. For me, it was kind of a bummer. I had big plans for this event. I really wanted to stream it. Um, I was told that I could stream it, but uh, unfortunately the internet connection there wasn't good enough to stream the tournament from. There was no actual wired internet. They only had wireless. And by using the wireless, it actually would have bogged down the rest of the system that the tournament was running on. So we had to bail out on that. Next, my GoPro, which I normally use to record all of my matches, was on the fritz. Come to find out, had a bad SD card. So that's gone. But now we're back. So it could be worse. Had to get that all fixed before I could get any more videos created. I'm back. In doubles, me and Russell ran into a few issues. At first, I wasn't blocking well, and he was scoring fairly well. Then, it went in the reverse. I started blocking better, he didn't start scoring as well. If you don't match up with your forward, and you're doing things well together, it's going to be much more difficult to win matches. We started playing really well together, and then ran into some unlucky situations, which we should have overcome. But at the end of the day, I had a really good time, and I'm slowly getting back to where I need to be in foosball tournament level. Let's go jump on the table, talk about a single zone, and maybe I'll even talk some more about Illinois State. When it comes to my single zone, it's actually pretty simple. It's based around the theory that people are not good. That sounds terrible, but hear me out. Let's say... Your opposing goalie has the ball set up for a pull shot. The main basis of my zone is a split-handed zone. So I have both hands controlling my goalie guys. My five bar is typically around the middle of the table. There'll be slight adjustments based upon what shots they're good at, and we'll go over that in just a minute. But first, let's just say he's in the middle. Next, you have to look at the holes of the table to how you set up the guys on your three rod and in defense. First and foremost, you have to remember most people don't have a big devastating long. Unless you're playing against a top pro, a pro master, or a great goalie that has a great long pull shot. So, I kind of offset my guys in a way to where the long is the main shot to try and score and forces them to shoot that or possibly a great pull kick. A lot of times I'll bring this guy just inside of center and I do mean just inside so that it kind of takes away the short slider with this guy. It's still there but you're going to defend it and stay in front of the ball with your three rod. So by just being in these little locations right now for the pull shooter who has the ball near a wall, really the only shots that he can take 
are spraying into my guys that are back here, accidentally hitting my 5 bar, or shooting a big pull or pull kick. By forcing them to those basic holes, what I do, by keeping all the guys angled forward in a fashion, that if it hits any of these guys, it's coming back to either my 5 bar, if it hits my goalie guys, or it's coming up to my 3 bar if it hits their, my 5 bar that's stationary. Now, even when they start moving the ball towards the line or something in that nature, I still have the ability to make minor adjustments. I always want the, this guy to be just offset and always have my 3 bar in front of the ball. By doing this and by making little minor adjustments with my guys, I find that I can block a fair amount of shots. The key to this zone is never jumping, not assuming that they're going to go long. Make them hit the long shot. The long shot's going to be the most difficult shot on the table. By forcing people to the most difficult shot on the table, you're taking away most of the general options and you can start baiting them for things later. Because you can always jump up with your middle guy to block the long. Now what happens if they start shooting a push shot? I move this guy a little bit off of center, still keep these guys in this fashion, but now by playing a game with them possibly shooting a push kick or a deep push with this zone, I'm making them play a little bit of a spike game, where if they make a mistake, I'm going to spike them. There's only really two holes. They have to have a perfect slider through here or a big push or push kick through here. Now by limiting what shots they can score, I know what to look for and to start taking away slowly over time. If I start realizing that they have a great push kick, I may change things a little bit. I may open these guys up a little bit more and see if they can hit the in-between. Or I might circle here more to try and bait out a big push kick in hopes that I can get a spike. This zone isn't probably the greatest zone. It's a zone that I've always used and is found to be very useful for me. Many people don't score from their two rod on me because of this zone. And by having hands in the goal, less ricochets that hit one of the guys or hit a back wall, leave my zone. I can immediately grab a rod and catch the ball, or I can grab the goalie rod, angle back to block incoming shots or ricochets. By using a very basic zone like this and just slightly adjusting the five bar back and forth, I find that I force people to difficult shots and then they make mistakes, causes turnovers, and allows for me to get the ball more often on either my 3-rod or my 2-rod, which are for me my most scoring and best options to score. Again guys, it's a very basic zone, but by being spread out across the table and allowing this little movement, I feel like I have more control of the table and the ability to get more loose balls. I can immediately grab my 5 bar if the ball flies around, and if the ball's in getting loose in the goalie, I can immediately grab this rod, have full length, and can catch anything that's coming in. Basic zones are really how I've explained it to you. You're trying to take away specific shots, force people to specific shots, so that you can start getting a better read on what they're capable of. By getting a read on what they're capable of, you can slowly take them away by making minor adjustments, just ever minor tweaks to the zone. You know, if I find that I am playing somebody that has a great pull shot, often I'll adjust. I'll keep maybe instead of the guys like this, I'll push the guy out more and maybe even switch to grabbing on my five bar. But if they don't have a good long pull shot, I'll let my guys be right here looking for ricochets, trying to spike and catch loose balls with my three, and force them to make mistakes. You'd be surprised how often even good players accidentally hit my five bar that's completely stationary and just towed forward. 
by doing just basic things and making slight adjustments, you can learn to make those adjustments. Let me explain this better. When you bring the game down to a really basic level, saying, okay, obviously this person can shoot a great pull shot, but maybe they don't have a great slider, a good angled shot. Everything they have is very square. Well, by keeping your guys towed forward, you're going to force all the balls back at them. But if they have a great slider, maybe instead of having the guys towed forward, you bring them down just a little bit. By doing that, it softens the catch. Instead of the ball ricocheting, it stops dead and you get the reception that way. Again, minor little tweaks to this zone throughout the course of a game can really grant you a better opportunity to win a game in singles. By simplifying what you're trying to take away and realizing what your opponent can do on a table allows your zone to get better. People keep asking me about singles and double zones. Singles and double zones aren't so much of what takes away everything, what's going to be the best zone for everyone. There's no answer to that. That's the reason you see so many different zones out there. Everybody plays it a slightly different way. You can score on this guy, but not on this guy because of their zone. There's no one right zone to block out everyone. It'd be impossible to do so. But by using the zone that you know and slowly taking away more and more as the match goes on allows you to have the upper hand. This is something important when it comes to foosball. You want to slowly take away what they're good at and force them to the things that they're not good at. I've said that before, and I'm sure I'll say that again. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Road to Pro. I do want to say I've been spending a fair amount of time bass fishing. Got him. say it's fun I want to start incorporating more things into this channel not always just foosball or I feel like I am gonna eventually run out of topics because there's only so much to talk about I'll be able to go to events and show you guys more and more but it's still just a little bit of foosball so expect some more just random videos me going to places me having a good time out bass fishing things like that if you don't like them Wait for the next foosball video. But there will be a whole lot more on this channel coming very soon. Also, at upcoming events, I'm going to be listing challenges. Challenges are a little weird. But, not just general matches. I want to have a little bit more fun. One-handed singles. Or, you know, rollerball. Something along those lines. If you see me at our local DYP, hit me up. Let's do a challenge. I'd love to get it on the channel. Everyone, thank you so much for watching another episode of Road to Pro. If you would, leave a comment down below, like the video, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. You can click some really cool links here and here. Thanks everybody, and happy foozin'.